Welcome to Alpha Wolf Capital. I'm Tim, and I want to personally thank you for stopping by. Between the OTC, New York Stock Exchange, and NASDAQ, there are over 22,000 companies traded publicly. I feel that small businesses are the backbone of America. This channel is designed to help small companies, both public and private, gain exposure with potential consumers, investors, even partners. Take, for example, today's guest. CEO and founder Bruce Rosner with privately held Green Life Tech. How would you like to be able to have vegetables and fruit that stayed fresh five times longer? Well, that is not unrealistic. Not with Bruce's invention, which I'll let him tell you more about in just a moment. It's important to understand that I do not collect compensation for the interviews I do here. The purpose of this channel is to find companies that have identified big problems and have found solutions to those problems. There's a thing called impact investing. It's, it's tied to environmental, social, and governance. By helping a small company become a large corporation, if you and I can become ambassadors of a product because the values of that company align with our own, think of all the jobs that will be created as that small company becomes a big company. Think about the community that that company is in. Typically, they thrive along with the company. This channel is to help companies that are relatively unknown become known so that they can build a following and they can have brand ambassadors that share their vision, share their mission, and are willing to do what they can to help have a positive impact on humanity. That's what this channel is all about. This is my invitation to you to become a positive impact person. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Capital coming at you with a, well, this is going to be a new one because uh, actually this is not a publicly traded company. This is a privately held company. But as uh, many of you know, I try to focus on companies that can have a positive impact on humanity. That is uh, the lesson I have learned over 37 years of what really matters. And there are a lot of fantastic companies out there that are doing things or are tackling big problems that can benefit humanity for the long, long haul. And uh, I came across Bruce Rosner here and Bruce, CEO and founder of Green Life Tech, and they are in in the midst of a private capital raise. So, if this is something that appeals to you, Bruce, how would they how would they get in touch with you? Uh, you can reach us through our website, which I think you have on the screen there, and, sh and showing my phone number as well as our uh, my email address, which is identified there. So, either one or through our website, which gives the same information. Okay. And the, uh, the QR code that I have up there, that is, that takes you right to your website too. Is that what that is? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So what we have with green life tech and, and you and I talked about your background, which has nothing to do with, uh, what you're currently in, <laughs> but there are lessons that you, that you have learned from your previous, where you spent what thirty years of your your life, um, technology, right? That's correct. I, I'm looking up here because I was pointing there, looking in my window out back, eating my flowers, mind you. <laughs> yes, I, I have uh, thirty plus years uh, in high tech electronics. 
I started three companies when I lived in California. And uh, the most recent overall, I started out in a solid state, but I, I did RFID. We did the first uh, implementation of passive RFID tags working for long read distance, working in, in the gigahertz range of operation. Okay. So the, the interesting thing, and, and this is what I try to tell people in the, in the stock market as well, is that I don't care how good the idea is or how obvious the benefits are, it always takes longer than you anticipate for the technology or solution to be adopted. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, when you come out with some new technology, some new capabilities, uh, it takes market acceptance. It's not so much tech technical limitations, but market acceptance of getting it in. Uh, we saw this with barcodes, uh, took over 20 years years with RFID, it took over 20 years. Uh, ours is a little different from that in that we already have a market establishing requirement and the solution, actually the need uh, has been developed more than 20 years ago. All right. So let's, let's talk. I've got these fruits and vegetables up there and everybody's probably chomping at the bit. What, what the heck is this? Right. Why don't you, why don't you kind of give everybody a little background on how you got here? Cause I thought that was pretty interesting in itself, but First, g give us a breakdown, Bruce, of, of what the product is, okay? And I'm going to scroll through your deck here and pull that up. But let everybody know what exactly it, the problem is that we have and your product and, and how it is going to help solve actually quite a few different issues. Hey there, thank you for tuning in and watching the interviews we do here at Alpha Wolf Capital. Uh, just like I look for companies that I feel ha could have a positive impact on humanity and could also offer a uh, better than average return on investment, I'm always looking for s tools or uh, applications that can help me do the research uh, and find those companies a little bit easier. And recently, I came across an app that does just that, and I want to share it with you because if you are wanting to learn about the financial markets, if you want to keep up to date on current events within the markets, if you want to learn more about trading or get stock picks or buy and sell recommendations, this is an app for you. And what I love about this app that is different from like Seeking Alpha or Motley Fool, which those are not uh, inexpensive um, apps. You can play anywhere up to about $115 a week for one of those apps. And this one equates to about $1.50 a week, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I was a little concerned maybe about the content because of how it's delivered which is in short-term video. And I have to tell you, I am pleasantly, more than pleasantly surprised. The quality of the content is, is fantastic. There is a lot of information to absorb. Um, they have a whole series of different, different categories that, um, that you can check out. They have about, I want to say, 15 stock picks or stock ideas a week. You've got buy and sell recommendations from Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, uh, JP Morgan. There's really a lot. If the Fed makes a move, you get, you know, real time information on what is happening in the market. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic tool. It's a mobile app. You get, like, you get three push notifications a day, I believe. And the quality of the content is really, really good. The video format is great for me because I'm a very visual person. Um, I like reading as well, but this is for, for getting a quick update on what's happening or what's moving. This is a fantastic app at a very reasonable price. And here's the bonus. If you use my link, you get 25% off of that subscription. Now you get a 14 day free trial. So you can sign up through the link, get a 14 day free trial. If you don't like it, cancel it. You don't have to sign up at all. But if you do like it, and I think you're gonna like what you find, 
$79 is about what it equates to a year. <laughs> if you're serious about learning about the financial industry, the markets, keeping up on that's nothing. That is a steal of a deal. So check out Stock Pick. Use the link in the, in the video description below. Get 25% off. And I think you're going to be very pleased. Yeah, uh, let me answer the first part of that question you, was, was how I got into this. Uh, I had been doing for uh, years of high-tech electronics. I was an expert witness in uh, patent litigation. And about three or four years ago, I, I don't know, I had a break in the action for a week and I can't sit down. But my wife I, has been throwing out wine. She opens a bottle, takes a glass or two out. You know, two or three days later, we empty the bottle of wine in the sink. And I thought, there's got to be a better way. What's causing this to go bad so quickly and what can be done to preserve it? So I looked into it, did a lot of research, came up with, an, uh, you know, and there are solutions out there for it, by the way. Uh, but bottom line is what's causing the problem was oxygen. Oxygen is uh, in, uh, adversely affects any organic. So we looked at the market uh, for uh, wine, spoiled wine. I mean, it's billions and billions of dollars. But I quickly realized that there was a much bigger market, much bigger need. It's called food, uh, fresh produce and so on. So th the idea is that if you can remove the oxygen, you can extend the shelf life out. Well documented. And this goes back to this 20-year basis. It's been known for decades. Uh, there's a uh, USDA Handbook 66 that started 35 years ago. And it talks about how you can extend the shelf life of various produce. 800 page document today. And it it's pretty simple. You can use refrigeration. You can use what they call controlled atmosphere, which is removing the oxygen. And But they never put them together. And what we've done with our technology development is allow us to do, use both if we want. But the concept is simple. And like say, you can go out and buy a gas container of nitrogen and you can accomplish pretty much what we want, we do with extending the shelf life out by flushing a container, getting the air out of there, and leaving behind nitrogen or argon, any inert gas, and so on. What we've come up with is a uh, technique, and, it's, and it allows us to work in what I call a very inefficient manner, but achieving in a very efficient result. By that, I mean, if you go out and buy a tank, Tank of nitrogen, I just mentioned, you're going to go out and buy 99.9% .9 pure. There's a lot of work that goes into that to getting it that high level. What we've done is use developed a technology which circulates the air through, through a closed container and removing the oxygen. And I remove only maybe 50% of it at a time as I circulate it through. And I keep removing 50%, getting it down. So it's just a geometric progression that as I go down, I can remove more and more of the oxygen. And what do you end up with? An inert environment. And we've actually proven this to go down to as low as 0.1% oxygen in the containers and so on. But we don't have to go that low. We just have to get down into the 1%, 2% range and removing the oxygen. And you create this primarily inert environment because it's what's left behind. And that's another beauty. We don't add anything. I only take oxygen out. So I, I don't have to have any FDA approvals or anything like that. So I just circulate, take the oxygen out, get left, and I, I'm left with an inert environment of primarily nitrogen in the air, a little bit of argon. And that, like I say, it's been well documented uh, by hundreds and thousands of articles. If you remove the oxygen, you extend the shelf life out of produce, anywhere from three to five times, depending on the type of produce and so on. And as I mentioned, we can apply this to also refrigeration. So you get a step up in the uh, by taking out the oxygen or putting it in a, uh, in a refrigerated environment if, if the type of produce, uh, some produce you can't refrigerate. So, and the combination of the two, uh, which we're doing as well with some of the uh, OEMs and so on, really takes that shelf life out if you like. And we have proof of that, we've done the test and so on. So it's just this concept of recirculating the air, taking the oxygen out. And also we added that you mentioned about the ozone. What we realized also, as we're extending the shelf life out, now you're having the creep up of uh, bacteria, viruses, and stuff like that, which is becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, one in six people in the United States get ill every year due to uh, bacteria on foods and so on. So we put ozone in there, which is a very deadly element, if you like, or a combination of it. It's actually ozone is O3. It's just an active state of oxygen. And we generate that ozone. We put a little bit in there at the end of our process to kill off all the bacteria. 
and the ozone just uh, decays back into breathable oxygen. So completely environmentally friendly, and we kill off all the bacteria at the same time. Another beauty of the ozone is it, uh, that uh, viruses, bacteria don't build up resilience to it like they do with other chemicals because the ozone operates in a different fashion the way it uh, uh, destroys the uh, viruses, the bacteria and so on. It actually operates on the DNA. So no buildup. Uh, there's no residue, and it decays back into breathable oxygen. So you got the best of all worlds. You extend the shelf life out, we kill off the bacteria, and you end up uh, with a technology that's applicable across the entire food chain, from harvest through uh, consumption. So, I mean, when you say it kills that, you're talking spores, fungus, it, it kills it all. It kills it all. And like I said, there are lots of reports on this. And it's interesting. There's some sport, you know, I, I, I wasn't educated in this area. I've learned a lot in the last couple of years looking into it. But you have a lot of bacteria and so on that the minute it's attacked, it will start creating spores, whether it's heat, lack of uh, something to grow on, whatever. It goes into this hibernation state, I guess I call it, but it goes into a spore, which is much harder to kill than the bacteria to begin with. And the ozone, it kills spores, the bacteria, everything. <laughs> All right. So we're, now, if you're if you're uh, if you're an ESG person, this is uh, this is a product that obviously is is a benefit more ways than one, and we're going to talk about it in depth here for a second. You've got health issues in this country that are really prevalent have, are seem to be getting worse and worse for our, our kids and 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 it's it's the quality of the you and i talked about this you're you're from i want to say you told me north carolina right and you've got some fresh fruit you're lucky i'm in the desert so i don't have a lot of fresh fruit going on over here but you've got fresh fruit you had a peach the other morning for breakfast it was like amazing and now I can get peaches that look amazing in Las Vegas. I can bring them home and they taste like crap. I mean, they just are, they have no taste. They're not sweet. They're not juicy. They're just garbage. I literally can't tell you how much fruit and vegetables I actually wind up tossing because it's just not, it doesn't taste good. Right. And we'll Absolutely. talk about that. Yeah, it, it's it's a major problem. You know, the fact that we can extend the shelf life of produce has many first order effects and second order. First of all, obviously, you can take, take the fruits and vegetables and extend them out so we have more fresh fruit available to us and we can have a healthier diet. You know, so that's kind of the first order, if you like. But there's a second order effect and actually well beyond that. Second order is now we can grow fruits and vegetables that actually taste good. Uh, I you know, I have the same problem as you do. I told my wife, don't even bring strawberries home anymore. They're no good. I'm throwing them out. I, I don't like them. They, they don't taste like strawberries. Now we can have fruits and vegetables that are grown for because they taste good and we can extend their shelf life out. So we the, what we now do is in terms of uh, the type of fruits and vegetables we grow, we can go back to good tasting and we we don't have to put chemicals on it to extend the shelf life out. So that's our first order effect there is we can have good fresh fruit and availability. And you talked about the health aspects. It's overwhelming our country. Uh, obesity, everybody knows this. I mean, it's not a, a secret anymore. Thirty Over 30% 30 of our uh, people are obese. Why are they obese? They're eating the wrong foods. We're eating processed foods. We're not getting access to fresh fresh produce. Even in the U.S., we have a large percentage of the population here that doesn't have access to fresh produce because uh, of, first of all, cost, availability in their areas. They might live in rural areas and stuff like this. So now being able to take produce and extend its shelf life out, we can get it to those people and we can keep our costs down because we're not throwing out 35% of the fruits and vegetables grown. Well, I mean, in the end, who's paying for that 35%? percent we all are uh you know it, it's part of the the bill it's built into it if you like uh we have to, we have to you know grow and distribute sell this hundred percent if you like then we throw out 35 percent well we're paying for that 35 percent so it's an economic issue and most uh affects the uh lower income be quite honest in the end because let's be honest about it, it you, you know you'll, you just mentioned you buy the fruits and vegetables you throw it out you don't go hungry 
and your health hasn't been uh, as a result of that. You go out and buy some more and so on. But there's a lot of low income. This just doesn't happen. They're without. Now they're going to buy processed foods, which has the secondary effects. Like, say, you know, we've touched on it, this chronic illness in the United States, which we didn't have 30, 40, 50 years ago. Now it's overwhelming. Why? Because we don't have good fresh produce. So, you know, our technology not only saves money, it saves the environment by reducing down the waste of spoilage, but we save lives. Right. And that's, and that's, and let's talk, let me expand upon the environment thing, because if you think about all the organic waste that gets put in our landfills, which then creates greenhouse gases, which creates a bigger problem, right? So yeah. this is a, this is a solution that addresses not one problem, but multiple problems. And that's why we're, you're here today, right? It's about- Absolutely. You, you, know, you talk about the environment. When people are shocked, and I was when I first started investigating this. In the United States, we throw out 300 million pounds per day. That's five football stadiums every day of spoiled produce. I mean, it's just overwhelming. And that spoilage creates 10% of our greenhouse gases. 10%. I mean, most if <laughs> the government comes out and they, they try and come up with ideas where they can reduce down, you know, greenhouse gases by, you know, a fraction of a percent, 1%, 2%, think they're doing great. We're attacking that 10%. Right. It's absolutely un unbelievable to me, the waste that we have. And it isn't just the U.S. either. Uh, the fact is, you know, it costs, the spoilage in the U.S. is about $400 billion a year of uh, food spoilage here in the U.S., uh, worldwide, it's 2.6 trillion. Heck, that's more than the gross national. Uh, the, our 400 billion is more than the gross national product of probably uh, 70 or 80 percent of the countries in the world. Right. I mean, it's and it, this. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I mean, it's sad. In all actuality, to me, it's just sad, right? Uh, but this is why, you know, the thing I love about the stock market is that humanity has got a lot of problems. The, and we're going to always have a lot of problems. And I'm not smart enough to address all the world's problems. I'm just not smart enough. But there are people like you, Bruce, that do find a problem and do find a solution. And then it's just a matter of having people recognize why this is such a, an important thing, right? And yeah. when you can have blueberries that are 72 days uh still looking good and tasting good that's pretty impressive right when you've got lettuce that lasts 24 additional days right that's nearly a full month uh yeah. cucumbers 16 days i mean this is this is significant right this is uh there's a definite difference between these two pictures right they don't look, this one doesn't look very good. I would, you know, I mean, this is, and this is what, 12 days in? I mean, that to me is is not not a good thing, right? Absolutely. So what, is the, the, what is the TAM on this? I mean, you just, you just said 400 and something billion, right? What, what, do you, what do you think the TAM is overall for this? Oh, God. We can't even measure it. It'd be in trillions, honestly. If you're looking worldwide, and you're, yeah. I mean, just like I, I threw out that number, two point six trillion dollars worldwide. Now we're not going to take that two point six trillion dollars and suddenly go down to zero. I'm not going to lie to anybody. But the fact is, even if I can affect ten percent, that's you know two hundred sixty billion dollars a year, ongoing forever. Right. It's gigantic. We don't even, and that's for food. Like I said, we, you know, uh, and that's probably right now one of the bigger markets but this can go after um, medications pharmaceuticals uh blood transfusion blood i mean it it's just amazing all these are known that if you'll put uh, place them in an anaerobic chamber oxygen free they'll extend the shelf life out flowers coffee uh, it just goes on and on and on right right so let's talk about what what you're currently what you're currently working on right now you're you're in the process uh you're, you're talking to some refrigerator manufacturers 
right? So essentially, it would be like the CRISPR drawer, but more of a high tech CRISPR drawer. And nobody, you put, you made a very good point with me when we first spoke. You said, so you know, do you read the instructions and and follow what you're supposed to do on your CRISPR drawer? And I can honestly say, I have never once looked at the instructions of my CRISPR drawer ever. Uh, yeah, I've but, got a lot of refrigerators. <laughs> this is, you know, the CRISPR drawers do help. Don't get me wrong. And every major manufacturer of refrigerators has a CRISPR drawer. But the fact is, most of them are trying to control the temperature very accurately or control the humidity. And if you read your instructions, Tim, you'll find that uh, for leafy items, you know, lettuce and so on, you want to have a higher humidity and you, you can put a little dot, a little tab in there, move it across for high humidity. For other vegetables and fruits, typically you want a lower humidity. But if you're like our house, and I'm sure most people do the same thing, it's a storage area. It's crisper drawer, just throw stuff in. And part of that reason that, you know, it's human nature, uh, unfortunately, especially here in the U.S., we don't read instructions, and, it's, and it requires us to do something. We have to move that little dial. With our technology, that's not the case. You throw the the product in there, you close the door, it'll automatically run and take the oxygen out. We don't want to have to have people go in there and say, gee, uh, I want to dial this in for ABC or whatever. Uh, that's not the case. We just take the oxygen level down and it extends the shelf life out. So we'd make it user friendly is the bottom line. And same, we know we have a countertop, you know, we've done a prototype on. We knew from day one, we can't have somebody going over there and, you know, the end user saying, gee, I have to figure this out. I have to put in a number here. I have to do this. No, open and close it. That's all you have to do. Same thing with the CRISPR door. Open it and close it and leave it alone. It'll take the oxygen out, extend your shelf life out. So I, I, I think the economic impact of that is huge. I, I, you know, being in Vegas, uh, I can't, I'm, I'm thinking about the hotels and the buffets and the, I mean, that food just goes it's gone, right? I mean, it, it, we throw so much food out. It's it's sad. It really is a sad, sad. I hate to throw throw out food because to me, it is like just throwing away money, right? Uh, but I hate eating um, food that tastes bad even more, right? That, that <laughs> I really well, hate that. So uh, I I just look at this thing and I and I say to myself, this is an I classify things in two categories: wants and needs right and and this one in my view is an absolute need what you need is you need people so there's you know i, I just listened to this guy the other day that said there's like 13 percent of the population is is early adopters and we have a lot of solutions out there for a lot of problems that if we had early adopters we had more early adopters we could solve problems a lot faster right if it makes Absolutely. sense and it's good for the environment it's good for your health it's it's got all these benefits and i mean when i tell you it does not matter how obvious these things are it still takes a long ass time to, for things to become adopted right we need to yes. increase the adoption curve. That's absolutely correct. And the reason, that's one reason that we are actually trying to work with strategic partners, such as refrigerator. I mean, people are already buying refrigerator. Next time you walk in, you know, it's not going to take 20 years from now, but you walk in to buy a refrigerator and they tell you, hey, I can extend your shelf life of your produce. And by the way, as a household, you're losing about $2,000 a year right now if you're the average household. And so, we're going to add this on there. It's going to cost a lot less than that $2,000, I can assure you. Uh, and we're going to extend it out and, and it saves you, you know, you're going to be able to eat fresh produce, improve your health. You don't have to go to the grocery store as often. Your costs are going to be reduced down. You get a return on your investment fairly quickly with this technology. It isn't like you're going to have to use this for five years. And, and along those lines, it's interesting. I, I went to a presentation uh, by a lady from the EPA, and she said she'd been at the EPA for 20 years. She said, the one thing we've learned is that no matter how, mu how much we talk about it and, and people jump up and down and say, yeah, we want to help the environment and so on, they don't. They, they want to help, but they don't do anything about it because there's not a return on the investment. There's no financial benefit. With this, you can see financial benefit from day one. And so that's another reason we think, 
You know, we can get it in the marketplace quicker by working with strategic partners, licensing and so on. And we can show you an immediate return on your investment. When you open it up, you know, and your lettuce is good after two days, five days, 10 days, you're gonna think, hey, this is pretty good. I don't have to throw that lettuce out on a three or four day basis and so on. I don't have to go to the grocery store, uh, you know, extra runs. Bananas, not at, for refrigerators, but at room temperature, you know, I just completed test here, two weeks. <laughs> and I have to run, I have to make extra runs to the grocery store because I do like bananas and I can't buy more than four or five days in advance. So I either have to plan to make a stop or my wife does or something like that just for bananas. You know, you also, you enlightened me also on um, the grocers. I mean, a, a lot of product, the way that it gets shipped, it's like, it's like right it's like almost at its peak of ripening, right? So that it looks good out on the shelves. It's, you know, the, I mean, this is like a, a, a quite a dance to get all that produce, put it out on the shelf, make it look appealing, right? That's why you've got appealing. Uh, you, you informed me about a company called Appeal, which is literally the, you know, it's Bill Gates, I think is involved, Oprah, they're literally spraying these things, these, these fruits and vegetables to make them look good. Uh, it wasn't intended to be that, you know, they, they deviated. It was supposed to be a spray it on and extend the life of the produce. Yeah, it wasn't meant to just look good, Tim. I mean, it does because it extends the shelf life out. But basically, they're trying to accomplish the exact same thing as we are. And they talk about it. They're very open about it. They put a, a it's a sense actually a barrier to oxygen getting into the fruits and vegetables. And it does work. Uh, the problem is it's a chemical. Secondly, applying it to all uh, types of fruits and vegetables, as you might imagine, is not an easy task. You know, with, uh, with uh, smaller fruits and smooth surfaces and so on, you know, it's fairly easy to do. But raspberries, as an example, things like that, uh, you know, it, and with where our technology is a gas, basically, or lack of gas, the oxygen, we penetrate all those surfaces, we get in there, and so on. So uh, we don't have the chemical, we can work with all fruits and vegetables, it isn't limited to uh, just smooth surface, medium sized fruits and vegetables. And, and again, it works in the end, we're trying to accomplish the same thing is keep the oxygen from getting in to the fruit or vegetable. So let's talk about this countertop uh, unit that you have. Uh, I wish I had one to, to show people, uh, but it's, it's, uh, how big is it, Bruce? How, how... That particular unit, that's, it's a prototype unit. I, I don't want to mislead anybody. It's not, you know, we're not in the manufacturing yet, uh, just because we didn't have the money to do so. Uh, but it's a unit, it's about, I think it's 18 inches wide, about 12 inches deep and about 11 12 inches high. And uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into that. Not only look good, but be functional and to really, you know, extend the shelf life out. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, the, everything from the door uh, and the, the looks, I mean, the details, and again, to make it user friendly. So somebody doesn't have to go over there and say, gee, I want to put this in there or that, and I have to schedule it. User friendly, open it up, put your fruits and vegetables in, close it up. And it does work at room temperature. I mean, that's the whole point. It, uh, this is uh, for, uh, as it stands, it's you know, not something you place in your refrigerator, it's room temperature. But the beauty of it also, we allow for uh, accessories, accessories being a wine stopper uh, and extra uh, containers and so on, so that you can take the oxygen out and put those containers in the refrigerator for those fruits and vegetables that should be refrigerated. And I should probably emphasize, we don't compete with refrigeration. We work in conjunction with, for those items that should be refrigerated. Okay. All right. So I think we've covered the, uh, the product. How, what, what is, I know it's, I know it's a prototype, but what's the, what's the cost, uh, uh, retail cost? We're targeting right now, uh, $399. This will be retail uh, price. Okay. And at some point, hopefully available through like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, primarily it'll be uh, through the internet initially. Uh, eventually uh, we wanna go to some premier uh, brick and mortar, but it, it, we don't look at this as being a 
uh, uh, something is sold uh, on lower end stores or uh, commodities and so on, because it is a premier product. We right. Now, having said that, we believe that we'll come out with what, what we call a micro, and I don't want to go into a lot of detail there, but it's something that's going to be less costly and uh, hopefully target more low income houses. Because at $399, let's be honest with it, you know, that isn't going to get into the low income houses, but we think it's something that's going to be significantly lower in cost and uh, can help the low income uh, households. Right. I, I mean, I, I look, even the ear. You know, look, I, I have not always been well to do when you want something bad enough. If you can if you can afford a, a, a pair of thousand dollar Nikes, uh, you can. Af and and those are things that you don't really need. Right. Uh, or or some kind of a um, sports, you know, uh, there's things that you can if you sacrifice, you can yep. you find a way to have this in your household. Right. People always find a way if they really, really wanted something badly. You just find a way to sacrifice and save, and you you can get this. I I think this is an important product. This is a a product that is has a lot of benefits to your health, to the environment. Of course, you know even the organic foods are are getting sprayed with this appeal stuff. Hopefully, we can get away from spraying things. You know, spraying on to these things and using this process to make the fruits and vegetables go back to taste and really, really good. Exactly. And, and in all honesty, it has to be more than just at the uh, household level. That's where most of the waste occurs, but a lot of that's carried over because you, you're you like everybody else and me. We buy something and I bring it home and I open it up, you know, strawberries, blueberries, ah, in the middle, guess what? Half of them are already rotten. I throw them out. So, you know, it's in that everything from harvest through shipping, storage, all the way up to the grocery store when you buy it. If we can ex extend that out and, and give you a little a quick story about this uh, without giving out any confidential information. We spoke with a uh, company on the East Coast that has their own uh, trucking. They have strawberries grown in California. They harvest them on a Monday. They drive them across country. I think it takes about two or three days, and they put them, get them there in the grocery, you know, on their in the grocery store. They've know they already used up fifty to seventy percent of the shelf life of that produce. So you've now bought them. You go in there, you know, let's say it gets there on Thursday. You go in there and buy them fresh produce. You haven't bought fresh produce. You've bought something that's already used up sixty percent of its lifespan. You only got a couple of days left. So that's. You know, it needs to go across the entire food chain to get this extension out, just like you say. So it isn't just at the very end, because if you get something in the 11th hour and use our system, it's not going to help much. I mean, I get some, you know, a produce that's 90 percent used up in its shelf life. It isn't like I'm going to extend out its total shelf life by 3x. I'm going to get maybe a day or two extra out of it at best. It's not worth it. I got to attack those other areas. And it, as a, uh, you know, as a, as a, a government entity looking at the big picture. We have to do it all the way from the beginning. From the time we harvest, start extending its shelf life out. So That's I mean, literally, you could have shipping containers that are oxygen and oxygen free and and ozone uh, added, right? Where, Absolutely. Yeah. That would be the intent. Like say, we've got to attack the entire food chain. Yep, man. It makes that makes perfect sense to me. Bruce, so, you know, look, this is not a publicly traded company. You are looking for, um, you are looking to raise a little capital. What is it? 1.5 is what you feel you need? That's correct. At the present time, and, and with on, based on that business model, we are a, um, a licensing company. We license our technology to uh, manufacturers, whether it be a refrigerator or small appliance, or, or as we get into other areas, uh, you know, shippers and stuff like this. So we'll license technology. So the one and a half million dollars uh, is basically if we want to proceed completely as a license. I also recognize, and I think that other people would as well, as we proceed, we'll probably want to develop more product and carry it through the market ourselves. But certainly initially to keep our costs down, uh, we'll do, we're will do. we doing licensing of the technology. Okay, so licensing with, um, you got refrigerator manufacturer, even, even wine coolers, right? I mean- if you've got a wine cooler, it kind of makes sense to have the 
you know, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how exactly it would work, but it's some kind of unit that's going to suck the air out of the, out of the wine bottle, right? Absolutely. And like I say, our fresh to fan home unit, the one for the household, does just that. We, I mean, we circulate the air uh, because once you pour it out, what's it filled with? The top half is air, oxygen. So we circulate the air, take the oxygen out. And, and in all honesty, there are some products out there today that work and they work well. And what they do is they use a gas, just like I talked about initially. If you want to go out and buy a, a tank of gas and do this, you can do it. So there's uh, some uh, units out there today for consumer use where they replace the wine that's coming out with argon and inert gas. And it extends the shelf life significantly by doing that. In our case, I circulate the air, take the oxygen out, leave nitrogen, basically nitrogen behind. Okay. All right. Um, if you have any, if you're interested in potentially, uh, being, if you're an accredited investor and you're interested in potentially, uh, learning more about the product and the plans for, for growth, when, Bruce, when do you think we would actually, we'll actually see something, something in available where people can literally get it in their possession? We're looking a year to two years out now, in all honesty, Tim. I, I you know, uh, we'd like to be optimistic, uh, especially going through licensing. Uh, it's a little slower process overall, uh, but we're looking at a, a year or two out uh, right, to so, get so the commercial this product. I, this is what I mean by you can be an impact person, right? Maybe you know somebody that is in the refrigeration industry. Maybe you know somebody that's in the shipping industry maybe you know somebody uh in the in the hotel industry the restaurant industry i don't know i mean there the way products grow is by acceptance and how do people find out about products typically word of mouth can be extremely powerful consumer has a lot of power uh companies don't succeed unless consumers adopt so i'm going to go back to we need to become especially for products like this because how sad would it be to have a solution that can extend the, the life make fruits and vegetables taste better give us better health benefits reduce greenhouse gases and i'm just rattling these things off because i've I'm saying here it is. The solution is here. How terrible would it be to, you know, 10 years from now go, hey, remember, remember that company that had this idea and it never went anywhere? Whose fault is that? That is yeah, it, our fault, right? It is. It's very unfortunate. And the thing is, uh, just to give you a little more uh, background information on this. <clears throat> Today in the U.S., if you look at the USDA, and the EPA, the first time ever that these two have joined forces to work on a, a program. And what is it? It's called, you know, uh, food loss and waste uh, decrease is uh, the program. I forget the exact title. But the whole concept is, is to reduce our loss, our food losses and so on. We have a White House supporting them. And yet, and, and oh, we also have a House of Representatives and a Senate committees in agriculture that are looking at food waste and reducing it down. And yet, you know, the biggest problem I have out of all these, the only one that that we're talk, we've tried to reach out to and have any conversation with is the EPA. The others are absolutely crickets on this. And yet you'd think that they would be very active. Here's the solution to the problem you've identified, and it's a big one. Why aren't why aren't these people more active in it? Everybody has an excuse that they can't do anything about it, especially when you deal with the government, as you might imagine. It's not my job. I can't do anything about that. We know it's a problem. We talk about it. It's like the weather. They all want to talk about it, but they can't do a thing about it. Yeah, that is, to me, that's a sin, right? I mean, that is, I always wonder, that's when the, the conspiracy, conspiracy <laughs> theories come into my head who is making money that would lose money if your solution comes to market right that's what I, it's always like you got to follow the money who who benefits by your product not 
being available. And and that is maybe how people should start thinking. You want to you want to demonize big companies, um, but yet you don't want to do the things that could take some of the power away from those big companies, right? By coming out with products like this that reduce that that it's all logic to me, <laughs> but for yeah. some reason we just don't do it, right? Yeah, well, I think you're absolutely right. You know, you follow the money. And the fact is, on the short term, when you think about it from the standpoint of the growers and the grocery stores and so on, you'll lose money. I mean, if you look at it, if you're the first one out and you're going to sell less produce, <clears throat> well, that's not a good business model. <laughs> but the fact is, if you if you if somebody else does this, and by the way, I, I read years and years ago, and I really believe this number, only 5% of the changes made are associated uh, with a positive influence, 95% of changes are made from negative influences. In other words, when you see your market going down, the grocery store down the street, all of a sudden they've got good produce and it's selling, you know, they're making, they're making uh, more money because they're selling produce that lasts longer. Then you're going to jump on the bandwagon because that's a negative influence. But right now, those first movers and so on, unless they can see the long term and give you a quick analogy here. When we were in the RFID and we implemented uh, this passive tags, I mean, we reduced down the cost 20 to one in terms of the tag. And we, we went to a, a user, uh, an agency that was doing uh, for tolling and so on. And part, our sales department said, are you stupid? If you go out there, we're selling them tags a day that costs we sell them for ten dollars, fourteen dollars, something like that. And now you're going to sell them a tag for a dollar. Think about this: they're going to sell the same number of tags, but from, instead of twelve dollars, it's a dollar. What's this do to our market? Well, like I told them, if you don't do it, somebody else will, and then we're going to be behind the eight ball and we're selling zero. Right. We sold that agency, and I, and I won't give you all the inside information, but they were the leaders in the area, and we used them as a model for worldwide sales of our RFID systems for tolling and became, we were selling 90% of the new, of the new uh, installations for RFID tolling because of that one agency having the guts and the foresight and ours, our people recognizing that there was a long-term solution to this. Yeah, it's going to hurt you for the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, because all of a sudden you're selling a tag for a dollar instead of 12. But guess what? Same thing here. You're going to sell less food, but if you don't do it, somebody else is going to, and then you're going to lose all of your margin. This is this is one of the things that um, technology, adopting technology is, this is one of the biggest issues, is people naively think that, okay, say it threatens your job, right? Because it is a more efficient system, safer system. Does that, because it threatens your job, is that a reason to ignore the technology? Because if it really is important, if it really is, you know, saves lives, like you say, that is that need thing that I talk about. At some point, the need will, it, it's, it's, it's going to be there. And at some point, it will be adopted. All you're doing is slowing down progress by trying to act like it doesn't exist, right? Because you're afraid of losing your job. You're going to lose your job. I would suggest that if you're the kind of person that says, you know what? Yep, this could this could cost me my job, but you know what? It's going to do an awful lot of good for an awful lot of people. And if this company adopts it sooner, we're going to be ahead of the curve, right? And we're doing the right thing. So if an employee comes to me and lays out the case, you think I'm going to fire that employee who just put the company above himself or herself? I don't think so. I'm probably going to wind up making that the future CEO. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's a leader. That's a leader right there. And that's what we need more of. So, uh, Bruce, I want to thank you very much for, you know, look, 
let's let's stay in touch when you do have you know no longer the prototype but you have the actual unit let's 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 do a follow-up and show people the thing so that they get a a good understanding and uh you know we'll, we'll keep plugging away and like i said if you're if you're interested you got the qr code up there that you can scan and uh Bruce is, as you can see, always willing to talk about the product and, and the issues that are at hand. And uh, you're currently in, in, in pretty deep discussions with any any refrigerant companies, or let's just say we're we're under NDA. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Okay, and talk about it. But yeah, but I mean, there's a genuine interest and uh, in-house testing, and, and without saying there. We're still talking, so obviously something's going right there. Again, I can't go into all the details, but but the technology works, and they're learning this. It's it's not, you know, some farce or you know just a uh, a trick. It actually works, right. and they're learning that, and that's the first barrier to overcome. Does it really work, or is this just another gadget? Because there are millions of gadgets out there. We know that this really works. Extends shelf life out, and uh, they have to see that internally. It isn't just a matter of us doing the tests and showing them. Uh, they've got to reproduce it, and which they're doing. The more people that that start talking about this company, start talking about this technology, and and bringing it to light, the benefits, the, the you know, you can have a movement. You can become a part of a movement, and it is something that will benefit everyone. And I I, I understand that you know. In, there's influencers out there right now that get paid a lot of money to, you know, just wear a product or talk about a product. That's great. How about just being an influencer in something because it's the right thing to do? Because it's, it would make everything better for everybody, right? And that's what we're looking for right now. We're looking for strategic uh, partners, uh, both from the standpoint of end users, as well as, uh, you know, looking at the environment environment. I mean, like say, we, we kind of hit the trifecto. You know, as an investor, you're going to make big bucks. The market is gigantic. We have a, a and we have well-protected technology. So, you know, there's value here. There's going to be a return on your investment. Secondly, like say the health issues, saving, you know, lives as well as making life better along the way, and then the environment. So it, it hits everything. Yeah, it does. It hits everything, Bruce. And, and I appreciate you. I wish you the best of luck, man. I mean, I, I, I hope to see these things everywhere. Um, and so I, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because I've been meaning to ask. The technology, the tech, you, you, you're, you're well insulated on that is in terms of protection? Yeah, we've uh, we've got patents pending right now. And um, my background is technical. And I, like I said, I was, I was patent uh, uh, expert witness in patent litigation. So, and so I know patents pretty well. Uh, yeah. And we knew that from day one, when we first started the company, I said that, you know, if we don't have patent protection, we're dead because we'll get knocked off immediately. We knew that. So we, and actually I took a different path this time with our patents. I submitted international for international patents rather than my history over the last number of years is always submit us and then subsequently we go for international i went international because it's a much more difficult path costs more but you have a higher barrier to get over right off the from the onset so that's the reason we did it we had to have that protection okay okay good all right bruce you feel as though i missed anything no i think you've hit everything tim i really appreciate uh take give me this opportunity and i will keep you updated and uh hopefully we can uh, move forward Yep, absolutely. I'm going to stay. You're stuck with me now. That's... <laughs> I've had worse things in my life I've been stuck with. So. <laughs> All right, Bruce. Thanks. Uh, like I said, QR code, website, and Bruce is, is willing to talk. If you are interested in getting involved in it, you just want to share. I'm sure Bruce would appreciate every positive comment or share with people, letting people know about what he is trying to do here so or any suggestions it doesn't have to be positive i mean if you come back say hey bruce you really messed up here why don't you do this why don't you look at that uh you learn from the stuff and and you know we're learning as we go along yep i love it 
the good news is I don't learn fast, but I learn good. <laughs> All right, Bruce. I'm going to go ahead and Thank shut you this off. Tim. Thank you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Capital. Today we had privately held Green Life Tech with Bruce Rosner. I hope you enjoyed today's interview, and if you did, do us a favor, give us a like. How about giving us a share, and while you're at it, why not give us a follow? Make sure you smash that subscribe button, because all of those things actually are very important to us here at Alpha Wolf Capital, and we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Capital wishes you the very best of success.